right, ladies and gentlemen, I am so excited to be here tonight. I cannot believe all that's been happening during this week. Oh my goodness, I've been busy. I'm supposed to be retired and here I am, this little thing, that little thing. I finally just shut the phone off for a while. Ah, oh, the night before, the night before I was supposed to be published, I couldn't sleep. I just had to, it was like waiting for the ball to come down on Times Square because I wanted to know if, you know, I wanted to be awake when uh, Tendencies was actually um, published. So I'm up waiting for midnight, waiting for this to happen. So I'm very excited and I wanna thank you for all that. I wanna show you today, guys, this is the absolute first book to come off of the press, Tendencies. It's always sent to the author. And so I got my copy quite a while ago. You might have seen me holding it in pictures and stuff. So that's the original. This one is mine. So I can't believe me, a science math major and computer science person, wrote a book. And it's a good book. And it, it has the backing up. I'm not being conceited. It has 32 five-star reviews on Barnes & Noble. And... Amazon won't allow reviews on until the, the issue day or the publication day, which is today. I am now an author. What makes me an author? Well, before the book was published, I was a writer. You are not an author until your book is published. And I have the best publishing company in the world. Dudley Court Press has been fantastic with me. I want to tell you that uh, they are doing everything to promote uh, Tainted Seas. They entered my writing my book into uh, the Benjamin Franklin National Writers Award Contest. And you don't, you have to send a submission. And so without me knowing, they send a part of the book in and, and I was accepted. They are fantastic. The ladies and gentlemen and their whole team over there are really, outstanding uh, and they've just been doing so much for me so also on Goodreads I want to remind you that on Goodreads there is a currently going on a contest a giveaway contest and if you go to Goodreads and look up I gave you some of those links over there I don't, don't know if I put Goodreads on there but you can check it out and uh, you can enter the contest who knows you might win but right now I have uh, what, 727 entries, I believe, in the contest and in Goodreads. I mean, this is, this is, this is blowing my mind. I got 441 readers on Goodreads that have marked Tainted Seas as a must-read or want-to-read book. How about that, huh? So anyway, so I promised tonight that I'd show you what is in the package, and I did get a package from Amazon, and I'm really thrilled. Now, if you ordered from Barnes & Noble, uh, I, I, I talked to my Dudley Court Press people today, it's more than probably I have ever, and what's in the package? Amazon is really fast, and today uh, I got my first copy, and I see from a bunch of people that are following me that they got their first copy. So Amazon is out. Barnes & Noble should have your copy to you. If you ordered it via Nook or eBook, Kindle, um, that should already be there. You should have that right now in your Kindle or in your Nook. I'm not quite sure how that works because I am not a, a Nook person. I'm one of these people that likes to hold the book or I love audiobooks, as you notice, because by the time I'm done writing, uh, my eyes are pretty dead. And so uh, I, you know, it's been quite a week. Okay. I don't know if you're available, uh, if you watched, but Dina Martin, the daughter of Dean Martin, the King of Cool, held my book up and read the dedication on the inside. Why did I send it to her? Because she dedicated a song. And I thought, well, as a thank you gift, I'll send her one of the preview books that I got. And uh, so I did. 
she held it up and read, oh my gosh. I mean, that's, that's more than I ever expected. And then she again sang Bud's favorite song, which is My Way. So yeah, her dad's song, Dean Martin, my husband was a Rat Pack fan and Dean Martin was one of his favorites. Uh, Dane Disease also gained the endorsement of the National Veterans Advocacy Association. And if you're not familiar with them, they're the complete volunteer organization led by Commander Wells. And Commander Wells and his team are the ones that get the legislation passed. If my veterans can't eat, it doesn't matter what kind of uh, other stuff is going on. It's, you know, they're all important. All the people that work for my veterans I love, but we got to get the money to, we got to get these bills passed. It's shameful that some of you folks have not had benefits all these years. One was the Vietnam War over. I mean, you know, 75, I said, this is really shameful. They made you go over to fight. They encouraged you to go over and fight and you did it willingly. And yet they discount you for something they didn't have to do. They didn't have to poison all those Vietnam vets over there. But that's a whole other story, and I'm going to stay happy tonight. Uh, so uh, veterans, uh, the National Veterans Advocacy Group will be promoting and advertising tainted uh, seas on their newsletter, Facebook, and all their social media. So you might see that coming up. Okay, my second book right now has uh, I've, is the, on the other side of the gangplank. This is a historical fiction, and it's loosely based on five women that I knew when I was a Navy wife during uh, the 60s, during the Vietnam crisis and the war. And um, the goal that I'm supposed to have on this book is 100,000 words, and I have 93,107. Now, if you understand the process of writing, I have to go back and, and fancy some things up, add some introspection, which means I'll be adding more words to it. And I have about three more chapters to do, and then that one should be done. I have three books with Dudley Court Press. The third one is going to be an army book, and that's called At the Wall. And that's another historical fiction. Okay, so uh, on Barnes and Noble, we got a 32 five-star review for that. That's not a bad thing. Uh, and for a while in Amazon, um, Tainted Seas was holding number one in the category of biological and chemical warfare. Uh, it dropped down a little bit now, uh, but you should be expecting that. You might already have it outside if you ordered it from Amazon early enough. Right now, a good reads the contest for the books has 837, I'm sorry, that's not right, that has to be updated. That was 914 entries, okay. And uh, these are my bookmarks. I've been giving them out and I've given out, oh, let's see, I had 500. I've given out about 554 bookmarks. I'm beginning to become a book pimp. <laughs> so it's, it's fun though. People are interested. People want to know. People want to know. Now, I gave you a contact uh, form and my website, if you go over to the right, it says contact. And you can contact me through that. It's not like I'm being terribly secret, but my son was protective. He put that in there to protect his mom because in the beginning, I, you know, since I've, <laughs> This is comical. Since I started this, I've gotten eight marriage proposals from men I don't even know. Um, and some of them, you can't believe how funny they are. One guy's coming from Denver and he has to leave very shortly before the police find him. And it just goes on and on from there. So in order to keep some kind of a semblance of normal at home, uh, Christopher, my son who developed my website, uh, put that contact in there. So you contact me through that and I'll get it and I will answer your questions. I always listen. If you have any suggestions for posts, I'll be glad to answer them. Now I'm going to take the very tough question that I got first and this was from Susan Nelson. She asked me, uh, she says initially, Linda, that your book was, and I'm paraphrasing here, that your book was just written for my children, our children, Bud and my children. When Bud died, our children were five, seven, and nine. 
and Bud was sick for close to four years. So you have to realize my children know their father. So I wrote what then was called Fading Mirror with the idea that my kids would have a memory book and I was going to give it to them for Christmas. So what changed? It was all done. Fading Mirror was all done, sent to my editor, Terry. And then February 2nd, 2020, I went to uh, Vet National Veterans Advocacy uh, Conference in Tampa, Florida. And that's, that's about maybe 45 minutes an hour from my home, depending on traffic. And I went up to thinking this was a total waste of time. They're not going to have the answer to why Bud died. What baffled me about Bud's death is that he, he was diagnosed at age uh, 29, and he had symptoms before. But the cancer that he got, he only had less than a one, per, one half percent chance of having that cancer. He had no family history of, of cancer in his, his family. And it just was a mystery. So I wanted to find it. So I went on a quest to find it. And you read about all some of the things I did on my quest. But I went up there and I sat at this conference. And when they told me what hit but the whole room went absolutely cold. And the temperature hadn't changed. It was just me. And uh, Commander Wells is such a, a detailed Commander Wells is a lawyer and very smart man, and he went step by step by step explaining why Bud fit into this character uh, cat category. Um, and then Brian Moyer, who was the second speaker, he was he was powerful. Brian Moyer not only had facts, but he had photos of Guam. They had sprayed dioxin, Agent Orange, um, right up to the reservoirs where our ship stopped and took in the water. I, I just came out of there shaking. And then I stayed until the afternoon. Now, I, I feel, you know, I got my benefits. I have to admit that. But Bud was active duty when he got sick, so there wasn't any question. He got 100%. And since that time, I've worked to get other women their benefits because I think they should have them, and men should. You all should have your benefits. But I left there so shaky, and they were working that, that afternoon on... Uh, they, bring in, they brought in volunteer lawyers to help those people get their benefits. So I left, and I sat in my car, sort of frozen in place. I thought, well, I can't stay in this parking lot forever. So I started the car, and I sort of, I, I couldn't function. I couldn't, um, I couldn't even work my GPS. That's how bad. And I sort of wandered around Tampa. And then finally, I got hungry, so I, st I don't eat meat, so I stopped at a Burger King and got a hamburger, of course because it was fast, and they immediately got heartburn. So then I'm going up the highway, Route 75, to go home. And uh, I was dysfunctional behind the wheel. I almost ran into another car. I, I was just, and then I realized, I, I, I mean, I'm a good driver. I was just terrible. So I got off at the bridge, the Sky Bridge, on the way to Sarasota. And I just sat there, and I looked at those waters, and I thought how beautiful and how pure and wonderful they are. And so I wondered if the waters in Vietnam were that pure before we violated all that space, hurting not only our soldiers, but our, the Vietnamese people over there. So it was really a surprise that sailors could be affected by this dioxin. Because I always thought Bud worked on nuclear power ships, so I thought, well, he had radiation poisoning. You know, he was exposed to something on ship, maybe asbestos. I mean, I'm a science major, and I just thought 
So even his civilian doctor, uh, before he died, asked me if Bud had ever been exposed to pesticides or weed killers. Guess what and, uh, Roundup is? It's a very weak form of or dioxins or Agent Orange. I don't like to call it Agent Orange because it was pink, blue, white, you name it. It was the color of the stripe. So I, t so I came home. And now I, the impact of that was horrible. I went to dinner with my brother, and then I came home, and I went in my bedroom. When I get upset, I go in my bedroom. From Saturday night until Tuesday morning, I didn't change out of my nightgown. I didn't wash my hair. I didn't take a shower. I ate, grabbed stuff out of the refrigerator and ate it, threw the dirty dishes in the sink. I mean, this is totally not me. And I was a mess. And meanwhile, all these emotions were going through my head. I was crying. I was mad. I was furious. I was so emotional. And I couldn't sleep. I couldn't sleep. I was awake all the time. And the only thing that broke me out of that trance was Tuesday. Uh, I don't like to have anybody see me be upset. So Tuesday, I was supposed to play Mahjong, and I was going to beg off. But they didn't have enough people to play if I didn't show up. And I didn't have the energy to find another player. So I got dressed and I went. And the last emotion I had before I went to Mahjong with anger. Oh, I was furious because my husband should not be dead. This is his dream to live in Florida. This is his dream to be on the golf course. It was his golf coast of Florida. It was his dream to go fishing in the Gulf of Mexico. It's so, it's so unfair, but I can't do anything about it. But what I can do is prevent other people. And I'm a pretty good writer. So I'm going to continue writing and talking about this. And then on the other side of the gangplank, it's brought up again. So guys, that's Susan's question. And then um, I got another question uh, from a few of you guys. Uh, I think the last one was from Stuart Hardy. Uh, concerned about this might be a girly girl book or that, you know, he might not have his interest through that. This is not a girly girl book for sure. This is, this is a wild roller coaster. It's going to have your emotions going up and down and all around. And it's going to have enough adventure in there for a man to enjoy. And I want to read you. Uh, you have what's called preview readers or, in, or in, the, in the publishing thing, it's called beta readers. So this is what one of my beta readers said about Tainted Seas. To read Tainted Seas, a sailor's story, one must have a carton of tissues for the tears of sadness and clean underwear after pissing their pants in laughter. And pretty much that's true because even as you, as you know, even at the funeral, there was bits of humor through my children. My children were five, seven, and nine, and they didn't want to sit through a funeral. So I thought, well, the funeral, I don't even remember the funeral. I was so spaced out, but I remember my children, and that's what I wrote about. So that was another question the guys asked me about. Um, so I rewrote it. I sent it back to Terry and my editor, Terry, was in the Army. Her husband was in the Army. Her father was in the Navy, and he came home with Agent Orange problems, too. So, I don't know. We have to stop doing that uh, to our guys. It's one thing for you guys and gals. I'm sorry, I'm from the 60s. I still think of that as being a man's thing. Um, I mean, you go over and give your time. At least you deserve people for whom you're fighting to take care of you during and after. 